This short little tape is about the benefits and the characteristics and how to use even two different types of handles. Now this one we call a split double handle and that means you know, it's kind of a V-shaped thing like this and it's typically used in place of maybe like a rope that people use for triceps and actually you could do a lot more with it than you can a rope. And there's a lot of physics behind the design of this thing. You may not realize that. That's one reason we're going to save it for last to talk about because it's a little bit in depth. The first thing we're going to discuss are these single webbing handles. And you may have seen them. They're actually standard equipment on some uh, specific brands of, of cable machines. But they typically take the place of the more conventional metal handle. Now I know you've seen for your cable crossovers and that kind of thing, almost every gym has the more traditional metal handle that might be square right here and has a little rotating metal sleeve on it. Well, that thing, the metal one, is to some degree limiting. And what I mean by that is, let's say you're doing your cable crossovers, all right? This requires me, the metal one, to achieve a more traditional fly type position, meaning uh, maybe I was here on my presses, right, with a dumbbell or a bar or something, but when we do a fly, what do we do? We move our hands like this. Well, this handle, the metal one or rather, would require that position, and that can be a problem for some people. And I don't mean a problem necessarily mechanically, but here's the issue. Is most people, when they try to turn their palm, they don't just supinate. Now this is in fact supination. This is a position of full supination. A lot of people don't see that because they learned, like I did, incorrectly I think, that supination is when your palm is facing upward, right, facing the ceiling. That's exactly accurate if you never move from this position we're standing in right here. That's why it's not super useful for exercise. It's more appropriate to learn the names of things like supination and pronation relative to what's happening in the bones, what's happening in the joint positions, not the palm position. So you can see that this is full supination. Someone would have to really know that the purpose of this ch chest exercise, the cable exercise, cable crossover, was to have this arm move in this transverse or horizontal plane and then maintain this fully supinated position at the same time. Typically, you know, the average person, when you walk through your gym, what you probably see people do is move to this position of having their palm vertical, but they didn't supinate. They moved their whole arm. They moved it at the shoulder. They did external rotation at the shoulder. And that's actually something we might want to stay away from because people end up going way back there. And when you're externally rotated and you're in this position of abduction away from your side like this, you end up at what's called a locked or close packed position. That may not be the ideal place to do this thing. Okay? So what do we teach? Well, typically in our lectures we teach on exercises where you have a choice of palm position or radial owner position. Put your palm in the same plane that you're trying to move your arm through. So if we're trying to move through the transverse or horizontal plane, our palm would appear to be horizontal or parallel to the ground. And that's the advantage of this handle, or at least the first one, is that I can do that just like that. That's all it takes because this PVC slips on this webbing. Boom, I'm getting all excited about it because it's cool. But you can turn right in there and now you're, you're within the plane of motion. Really easy to maintain all that. That's the first advantage of this thing I want you to see. Secondly, here's, here's a scenario for you. You're doing your cable crossovers. Get fatigued. Some people like to do drop sets or descending sets where they'd run over on their last repetition and they'd drop the weight a little bit, a little lighter, and keep going. Well, you don't have to drop the weight here. You could actually just slip this up, put your arm through here. By having this strap near my elbow, I've decreased the leverage of the resistance against me, it's really half the resistance right now that it was before. So right there I could do that for a descending set. Or actually there's another reason to do that still, is because when any weight is closer to your shoulder, there are less joint forces. And sometimes those come into play like compression or shear, and especially something like shear in the shoulder is not a good deal. Now we have to do much more advanced analysis to understand which exercises, which positions, which directions of resistance cause those. But regardless, moving the weight closer to the joint, of the joint action, the joint that's moving, the axis, is going to decrease some of those forces, even if you increase the weight. What do I mean by that? Well, if I was used to doing 10 pound cable crossovers, and I started with this thing up here like this, I could put 20 pounds on the cable crossover machine because I have increased mechanical advantage here. You see what I mean? So that's obviously we're not talking about the drop set or descending set thing anymore. But there's another advantage to this because I don't have to run over to the other side of the gym and get the ankle strap. 
you know, and those things typically are not too great anyway, because they've got a buckle on them, you've got to fight with them and all that stuff. All I do is move the PVC out of the way, you've got this webbing right here. Now, if you had a whole bunch of weight, it might not be super comfortable because it's only one inch wide, but it's plenty for most of the exercises that you're going to do. It's plenty comfortable. Now, there's another issue. Have you ever seen, there, there's a, some people out there that are teaching something like, because your chest is an internal rotator, you can internal rotate as you do your, your chest exercises. And there's something to be said for that, um, a kind of a side note there. If you're going to add in that motion of internal rotation, you would want to use an overall lighter resistance because it makes the thing a lot tougher, first of all. So don't try to use the same way that you do with your more traditional cable crossover type movement. But if you decide to do that, you now have a couple choices because you have a webbing handle. Number one, I'm doing this, let me scoot out a little bit here. I'm doing my, my cable movement. I want to start here. Maybe I want to be externally rotated, they say. Obviously, you're not too far back, but out to the side. And then I want to internally rotate as I go through it. Notice I can do that with my hand through here because the PVC moves on the webbing. Now, first, you have to learn that we're not just talking about pronating as we do this, right? Do you see how as I go through this? If I just pronate, I'm not changing anything. It actually has to be, now do you see what I'm doing? Can you see that? How I'm internally rotating as I go through the motion. That's what we're trying to look for. So you could actually do that, but if you wanted to go one step tougher, a little more advanced, take this handle, move the PVC in line with the webbing, and grab it so it's all coming out one side of your hand, the top of your hand in this particular case. Why? Because now, as I come across, I actually have resistance against the rotation. And like I said, I couldn't do this with the same way that I could do just my regular cable crossovers because this makes it a lot tougher, okay? So I changed to an appropriate resistance, and right now I have resisted internal rotation, noticing that my whole arm's doing the rotating. It's not just at my forearm and hand, right? So there's three really cool things you can do with this handle, not only term, in terms of adjusting hand position and leaving it there, I can move it as I go. I can grab clear outside of it, or I can get rid of the handle entirely and put it up on my extremity. So let's look at some other examples now. This is a great, this lateral raise type thing with resistance from this direction. It's great for supraspinatus, right, part of your rotator cuff. Great deltoid exercise. But one thing you might want to do here also to decrease further the joint forces inside here, the things that may not be too good on you later down the road, we can take this, bring it up near your proximal forearm, near the elbow, and right there, you've decreased joint forces dramatically. So there's a great use for this webbing handle. Again, I don't have to run across the room and get the ankle strap to do that thing. Pretty neat. What else can I do? Lower this thing a little bit. Elbow flexors, right? Think about your elbow flexors. We know that if you alter radial ulnar position, supination, neutral, pronation, all that stuff, we can uh, change the contribution of the biceps versus the brachialis versus the brachioradialis. Now, they're all three always going to work, right? You know that. But you can change the contribution, kind of. For example, fully supinated is supposed to be a little more bicep. And I could easily go to my neutral grip, right, with the same handle. So it's really nice, just right there, neutral grip, which is supposed to be a little more brachioradialis, supposedly, right? And of course, the pronated grip's really easy, too. No problem. But here's something else you could do. Given that the bicep is a supinator, I can load supination while I'm loading or challenging my elbow flexion. And that's the coolest thing, because once again, I take my handle right here and get it in line with the webbing and grab it so that the webbing is coming out this bottom side, right, or this more uh, medial side of my palm. So now, if I start here and supinate on the way, it was actually resisted supination as I did that. Now that is really, really cool. Or I could even just, I could just leave my palm supinated the whole time, but still have that resistance against it, which should theoretically activate the bicep a little more, even if I don't go through the motion. I can keep it supinated, but have it loaded off that one side of the hand. Now, that's a really cool thing. And of course, the obvious is people that don't have full supination, they're trying to grab a straight bar or a fixed handle, it's going to be uncomfortable for them. They could obviously do the curl kind of somewhere between neutral and supination if that's more comfortable for them. So there's tremendous advantage. Final thing we might look at, something like triceps. See, commonly, you're doing a single or even even a bar, a big bar on triceps, you're typically in a fully pronated position, right? 
So your, your bones of your forearm are totally crossed over. But watch what happens. As I do this, watch what my elbow does. Really typical for people to, when going into full pronation for the elbow to try to kick out to the side a little bit. And especially as you try to straighten out of the way because one thing that we know for sure is that with these bones crossed over, which is the definition of full pronation, it makes it a little tougher to get all the way to full extension. You're going to have a tendency to try to unwind that near the bottom. So we can eliminate some of that problem of that elbow kicking out and putting in shoulder muscles into the movement and that kind of stuff. You can eliminate some of that by being maybe uh, in this position so you're not all the way pronated. You're, you're kind of between pronation and neutral or actually go clear to neutral. You see that? And one of the cool things about this, if you've got people, if you ever have those people where actually gripping something causes them discomfort here, either because of some kind of medial or lateral epicondylitis or some kind of tendonitis, right? Well, I can do a tricep exercise here with this solid handle in my hand and not even have to grip because this thing is completely encompassing my fist. Or I can grip lightly. Now, I don't have the same challenge as a rope where I have to grab all the way around the thing and hold on for my life, right? So there are some tremendous advantages right there of this single webbing handle, probably more than you ever uh, cared to hear about. But now I want you to really sit back and think, put on your thinking cap for a minute, because we're going to look at the physics of the split double handle. Now, I don't have a rope right here, but if you had one, you would probably remember or you could see that ropes used for triceps are only about maybe 12 inches long on each side. And they got a big knot down here. But when you use them and you spread your hands apart, you'll notice, just like you can see right here on me, that that rope, each side of the rope, spreads apart enough to create quite an angle between the two. So they start out virtually together. And by the time you get to the end, they spread apart, well, I'm, I've got a really light weight on here, but they're spreading apart probably 150 degrees right here the way I'm using it. Well, whether you know it or not, that plays a huge role in the actual amount of resistance you have to move. What's actually on the cable in terms of where you put the pin is just a fraction of the total load you're receiving, and here's why.